Before I support uh, the amendment from Deputy Healy, I would remind the Minister and the Government of the slogan that I'm sure they now want to forget, recovery going. How can you justify having gone to the people almost two years ago with a slogan of keep the recovery going and at the same time continue with measures that were implemented under the guise of a supposed financial uh, emergency? Uh, how can you square the two things at once? I'm intrigued at how the Minister can possibly uh, stand over this. Um, the reality, of course, is that financial, the financial emergency, so-called, uh, which was an emergency of capitalism, uh, a crisis of the capitalist system, a crisis of the bankers, of the bondholders, and then bailed out by ordinary uh, workers and public sector workers in particular, uh, blamed and facing the, the price for that, um, uh, is that that was used exactly as, as Deputy Boy Barrett said, as, as part of a shock doctrine, uh, that around the world they saw the opportunity of a crisis to shift wealth from labour to capital, to shift the terms of the relative power between working class people and the capitalist class, and on that basis to restore profitability from the point of view of the 1%. Uh, and what the legislation before us does is it enshrines some of those attacks that were supposedly temporary, it enshrines them in a very obvious way as being permanent. Uh, number one among them, and this bill makes no mention whatsoever, is the issue of pay inequality, the issue of pay apartheid between uh, long-standing uh, members of the public uh, service and new, new entrants, uh, which now new entrants is quite a, a broad term encompassing a huge number uh, of workers. And in my opinion, that was always about not just the you know, penny-pinching savings of what you save from not paying young workers the appropriate uh, rate for the job, but it was also about fundamentally undermining solidarity between workers, creating an intergenerational divide between younger workers and older workers in the trade union movement that could be exploited in the future to undermine uh, those workers and their ability to fight back. But it enshrines that pay inequality. It continues with that pay apartheid. Um, similarly, it continues with uh, the pension levy, um, slightly uh, amended, but then made absolutely permanent. Uh, it's, a, it's a pay cut. It always was a pay cut. Uh, it was a pay cut dressed up in the language of what good pensions <coughs> public sector workers uh, have, uh, pensions, of course, that they paid for. Um, but it's a pay cut, and it's a pay cut that is made uh, absolutely permanent uh, now, illustrating that all along it was always about a pay cut for public sector workers. And then, probably most substantially, is the absolutely draconian, undemocratic nature of refusing the right of workers to reject deals that are put to them. It's an attempt to fundamentally undermine the basis of free collective bargaining, that workers have the right to negotiate collectively with their employer, in this case the employer is, their sta is the state, and have the right to reject a deal that is put before them. Instead you have a gun put to their head saying you can accept the deal or you can reject the deal, in which case it will be imposed on you in any case and will punish you even further. Incredibly draconian, incredibly repressive, incredibly undemocratic, one of the victories for uh, the 1% in this country out of the period of crisis. And unfortunately, acquiesced in by a significant section of the trade union leadership, which it assists them in keeping their own members quiescent if they're trying to sell bad deals, if they're able to point to other unions that refuse to take bad deals and point to the way that they're being treated. Uh, utterly scandalous uh, behaviour. And if you think back to the language used around public sector workers at the time and how precisely the, the attention was turned from the bankers, the bondholders, the developers who were responsible for the crisis and which we were paying for, all workers, public and private, and you think about the demonisation of public sector workers which the government at the time engaged in, which Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael and Labour have all participated in, have all participated in the attacks on. It reminds one of the quote from Malcolm X, that if you're not careful the newspapers will have you hating the people 
who are being oppressed and loving the people who are doing the oppressors. And the FEMPI bill, the FEMPI attacks, the attacks on public sector workers, on dressing up pay cuts as pension levies, was all part of that process, was all part of a divide and rule attempt of working class people between private sector workers and public sector workers to undermine the collective positioning and collective power of workers as a whole for the benefit of the rich in our society. And just look at the, the reality. Of course, th there is a financial emergency from the point of view of many ordinary people. If you're looking to have decent standard accommodation and you're a low paid worker, you face a financial emergency. If you're a low paid public sector worker, a low paid private sector worker, you're trying to afford crash fees, you have a financial uh, emergency. There are real financial emergencies from the point of view of ordinary people. But that is not the picture in the economy as a whole. Household net wealth has risen by 45% since mid-2012. Household net wealth is over 650 billion euros. But the problem is that that household not wealth, net wealth is not going to, to ordinary public sector workers, to ordinary private sector workers. It's going to the very top 5% and top 1% in our society. You just think about the fact that the richest 300 people have doubled their wealth over the course of the crisis. It's gone from 50 billion in 2010 to over 100 billion in personal wealth right now. The same is the case in terms of profits, which have doubled uh, over the same period of time, for, or slightly before that, from 75 billion euros to 150 uh, billion euros. And at the same time, of course, you know, the massive profits being facilitated and being avoided and paying any tax by uh, this government made by Apple, by Google, by Facebook, uh, and all the rest. Um, so it, it's not credible for the government to stand over and to reject this amendment and suggest that in some way a financial emergency continues. Of course, it, it just exposes the reality that you saw your opportunity and previous governments saw the opportunity to attack the interests of all workers and it took the opportunity to do that. The only way to defeat it is for the union movement as a whole to take a stand against it, to say we reject all such draconian legislation we reject pay, apartheid pay inequality, which is you know, a, a massive blow against the solidarity that is necessary in order to be able to defeat the employers, and in this case, uh, the state. Uh, and we reject the ongoing pay cuts to public sector uh, workers, which the so-called pension levy uh, represents.